Hello everybody and welcome back to I Want a Mini Bike. It is day five. So far I have done pretty good surviving, which is actually saying something. Uh, the bear appears to be back. I thought he left, but uh, yeah, the bear appears to be back. Hmm. Anyways, so what is our plan for today? Well, I actually don't really know. I really don't. Uh, <laughs> This is pretty much what I do when I'm playing this game. I get very, very confused. I guess I could go exploring a bit. I mean, that gets to be the interesting part where I start exploring, start doing things. Now that I actually have a pretty powerful bow, I should probably make some more arrows, though, if I'm going to go back out, like, up to that village and try to uh, finish off exploring that village. Let's see, what do I got here? I got the mold. I need iron. Which I don't have a lot of, do I? Let's see what I got. Hmm. A lot of poker chips, but they take forever to actually refine. What else do I need? I need fuel to cook. Oh, and look, I have more poker chips. And iron arrowheads, and empty cans. Holy crap! I have freaking everything. Boop. That did not work. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering if that would just tack on at the end. It didn't. All right, so there's two iron arrowheads, a couple of cans. All right, so in episode three, I've been recording these in uh, two episode bits. Uh, yeah, recording these two episodes at a time. Yeah, plenty of time. And uh, in the... In episode three, I mentioned about a few problems I was having with Adobe. Uh, with Premiere because of uh... mm, come on let's get my head in the game here because of YouTube telling me that the audio sync is wrong well when I was editing up these video or those two videos episode 3 and episode 4 I noticed that there was another freaking problem where when I hit play on the preview to see where I needed to start editing, where I needed to stop editing, and that kind of thing, it was uh, playing at like three times the speed for some reason. I don't know why, but now Adobe's not doing this thing. Well, no, it's always done that, hasn't it? Where it doesn't actually speed up the audio. It just starts jumping with the audio. So it'll play like half of a word and then move on to the next word. And I can't edit that way. I can't. Um, it's impossible. I can't tell what I'm saying, where I am in the video, what I need to edit, where you know the next edit is, that kind of thing. I can't tell. So I spend probably about two hours the other day looking up how to fix this particular problem. Uh, 30 seconds. And uh, I couldn't figure out how to fix it. I am half tempted to go over there and kill the bear, but he seems to be leaving me alone right now. Anyways, um, so yeah, I spent all this time trying to figure out how to fix this problem. Couldn't figure it out. I figured out that if you, let's see, it's Shift R and Shift L, I believe, or is this Shift J and Shift L? I forget. One of them uh, speeds up playback in the preview. And one of them slows down playback in the preview. Way crap more arrows. Uh, 30. Yeah, that should be enough. Well, I tried using that. I used the command to slow down playback. So it slowed it down, but I still couldn't edit. Slowed it down a little bit more, still couldn't edit. And then started playing it in reverse. So it never actually went back to the proper speed. And I started fiddling with settings. I thought, oh, well, maybe it's because of the video. You know, something went weird with the encoding. Something, whoa, shit. All right, time to figure out if I can take out a bear. Uh, something. I figured something had gone wrong with the uh, encoding. Something with shadow play had screwed up. So I threw in another video that I had been using for a very long time. What am I, the, my intro of it, the Chrono Plays intro. 
which I really do kind of want to get a different intro for this series, because it is a different type of series. You would think shooting the bear in the head this many times would freaking kill it. There it goes. I can kill a bear. Holy shit. For a while, I didn't think that was possible. I do hear something. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I imported my intro video and just my intro video. That's all the bear meat? To see if that worked, and it still did exactly the same thing. I'm like, what the crap is going on here? This is really annoying and, you know, really crappy. So, in the end, what I ended up doing, I went, I took my, uh, took all of the video that I recorded and took it to my office. I have a laptop there that's running Adobe Premiere as well. I have the Creative Cloud, as I mentioned, so I can install it wherever I want as long as it's me using it. It's fine. So, I, uh, went there and started editing it up, figuring, well, maybe it is something with the video let's compare with a completely separate install and it worked perfectly fine I was able to edit just fine on that on my laptop now that laptop doesn't have anywhere near enough power to actually encode the video so what I did was I saved all of that saved my edits and uh, brought all of that home to encode encoded just fine playback of the actual file was fine. You know, no problems whatsoever. You know what? Arrows are worthless unless I have a... or Yeah. Unless I have a working bow, arrows don't work. So, yeah. Interesting stuff happened. <laughs> and, uh... Wouldn't let me encode. Video I recorded for my other channel just today... Edited fine. So I don't know what was happening yesterday. I figured it was because I hadn't rebooted my PC in a very long time. Up to 13 days. And I know 13 days isn't a very long time, but uh, this is Windows 10 we're talking about here at beta operating system. Uh, pff, a beta operating system that uh, some people are even arguing isn't beta. It's freaking alpha level. It's up for debate. I think it's uh, late beta. Either way, it's not ready. But, uh, yeah, 13 days, it's been up and running. Ooh, and the extra bonus, the Windows updates. But, you know, I, wa I kind of wanted to reboot. I kind of didn't want to reboot because I want to get to at least day 7 here. All right. So if I stop the server and restart the server, it will reset the, the server to day 1. Well, that's kind of cheating, isn't it? If I get the whole way to, you know, day six, for example, and then stop the server, start it up again, well, that kind of resets everything back to day one, and I never have to deal with a day seven mob now, do I? So it is kind of cheaty. But, uh, so I've decided that I'm going to avoid rebooting as long, or up until I get to... Day 7. Well, technically, until I get to Day 8, because i got to survive Night 7. Because that's the big important thing. Um, I am now heading off to that village. Did I, by chance... No. Wait. The village is that way? Wait, where the heck? The village is over here. Interesting. I thought it was directly north. It's not. It's this way. Hmm. All right, that makes sense. Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't want to reboot my computer because I don't want to restart the server until at least after day seven. Then I can reboot all I want, um, just as long as I'm not uh, being cheaty. Yes, I know, it's... I think it's a glitch. I don't think it's supposed to work that way. That's a pig. Um, and I did say that any cheat I can abuse. Well... I didn't say I will abuse any cheat. I said I can abuse any cheat. So, um... I don't want to abuse that one. You know, because it does feel kind of cheaty. It always felt kind of cheaty. 
in the last world I played, I had to reboot the PC enough times that I almost never made it to day seven. Didn't feel wrong on that server because I'm not recording it for posterity. Or whatever the crap you want to call this since, you know, as of five hours after my last video went live, one person has viewed it. I don't know what kind of posterity I'm thinking of here, but whatever. I'm mo I'm doing this as a hobby, you know, more as a hobby. Uh, I'm open to suggestions for videos, uh, what I should do, how I should do them, something to make things more entertaining. I'm open to suggestions, or even other games that uh, you guys want me to play. I will listen to anything. I can't guarantee I will do it, but I will listen to it. Anyways, um... So, let's see. Anything else interesting happened today? A couple of things happened. Um, this morning, I get an email saying that one of my videos has a copyright claim against it. I forget who it was. I really do. Oh, again? Ugh. I need to use this bow so I can kill things and level up, but... Oh, I am now level 10. This is this is a bonus. I wonder if I can make something higher level. Anyways, I got a, yeah, a copyright claim on one of my videos. And I figured it was one of these videos, and it was complaining about that, uh, the, the morning song in the game. I'm like, well, I don't know uh, the, uh... What the crap? Okay, there's a crawler there. I must have ran over the crawler. Come out of the grass. Thank you. Um, yeah, I figured it was on these videos because I had just finished uploading them. No, it was on a video I uploaded like a year ago. It was my uh, anti-protest. The I wanted Half-Life 3 to come out finally and finish the bloody story, you know, like just about everybody else who's ever played Half-Life. Um... And it wasn't even, like, a song or anything. It was purely in-game audio. Which taught me an interesting factoid. People are taking in-game audio from Valve. Specifically in this case. But from other people, I would assume. Claiming it as their own. Putting it in their music. Claiming it as their own and filing takedown claims. That is dickish. Now, I don't know about the legality of it, but either way, it's dickish. Um, it was, the audio was transformed, but I could easily recognize what the audio was. I, I found the song, it's on Google Music, and no, I'm not going to link to it because I think the guy's dick for doing it. Um, but, uh, I found it on Google Music, and I, d I pay for Google Music, so I got to listen to it for free, and it is most definitely the audio from, uh, Half-Life 1, specifically, and it's, yeah, so it was slightly distorted, but I could tell instantly that it was it, the exact sound effects that were in that part of the game. I, of course, fought it because that's bullshit. You cannot claim copyright on audio that you do not own. You may have transformed it, and that transformation may qualify, may qualify as its own copyright, but you cannot claim copyright on the original source audio. Uh, grab that. So I instantly filed a counter. And uh, so, yeah, I file a counter and then I, you know, wander off for a little while. A little while later, I get an email telling me, oh, your claim has been released. I'm like, oh, well, that's good. They uh, looked at it, they saw it was bullshit, and they released their claim. Because. 
I have 15 days to respond to a claim like that. The people who file the claim after a counterclaim is filed have 30 days. All right. Which is bullshit. Um, I know I know why YouTube does it. Well, I kind of... I, I understand why YouTube does the 15-day thing. Like, I have to reply within 15 days. I understand that. That is uh, part of the DMC law. DMCA. Uh, Digital Millennium Copyright Act. That uh, if somebody files a DMCA claim... They have fit, or the person that's filed against has 15 days to respond to do something about it, and if they don't, they lose safe harbors. Now, a content ID claim is not a DCMCIA or a DCMCIA. What the fuck was that? A DMCA. It's not a DMCA claim. It's not. Uh, it's YouTube going way above and beyond what the law requires. Mostly because they got their asses sued by Viacom, even though Viacom probably had no case. Um, they just did it just to shut Viacom up. And I have no food. I just suddenly realized that. Oh, I have food. Hang on. I have chicken rations. Which takes my hydration, but I don't care. And I have tuna, which I think takes my hydration as well, but I don't care. All right, moving along. Um, so what the hell was I saying? Dude, my brain loses train of thought so bloody fast. It's ridiculous. Anyways, uh, YouTube goes way above and beyond what is required by DCMCA, or the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And uh, that's what that is. That's YouTube going above and beyond, but it's doing the 15-day thing, I have 15 days to respond to a content ID claim because that's what the law says and it sounds like an interesting number. Might even be a good number. I don't know. But uh, the 30-day thing to respond, I don't understand. I don't understand why it's twice what I'm given. Not a clue. Uh, now, scammers have used that to their advantage. If, the, like, they'll file a claim, YouTube will uh, monetize the video because people who file a claim have a choice. They can either monetize the video themselves and make money off of it, or they can take the video down. Or I think they can uh, prevent monetization as well. Yeah, that's that's a third option. They can prevent monetization. Um and I think it's even something as simple like they don't have to care. Um, they can actually uh, just send a warning, like say that uh, this content is owned by this person, but they don't have to do anything else. I don't really know all of them. I don't file copyright notices with YouTube because, well, I don't make anything that's... Well, I make plenty of things that are good enough to worry about copyright, but I don't make uh, in anything on this channel worthy enough to care about. Ugh. And I really don't care enough about fighting copyright to make any claims for anything else. Um, but yeah, so uh, scammers would use the very, very broken content ID system to claim a video that they have no rights to claim to, Somebody would counter that, but the uh, person who made the claim initially, the scammer, would just ignore the counter for 30 days, and then YouTube would let the, or they would let it time out. YouTube would remove the claim, and uh, everything would go back to normal. However, the money gained from monetization would still go to the scammers. Because you, YouTube didn't put it in, like, an account somewhere and say, okay, so this money will go to whoever uh, wins the debate. It basically just, uh, you know, goes to the person who made the claim, and that's it. Those, that's, there's no other way of doing things. So scammers would use that, make claims, get money, 
and move on to the next fake claim. Now, I think, don't quote me on this, but I think YouTube actually fixed that. I think it will actually hold the money now so people can't scam it. All right, so, uh, so far in this story, the uh, timeline is I got a YouTube claim, or I got a content ID claim on a video that I had uploaded, like, last year. I got, or I filed a counter notice, and a couple hours later, I got an email telling me that the claim has been lifted. So I read the email, and it said, your claim has been lifted. I'm like, oh, that's good. Due to the party not responding within 30 days. What? <laughs> and this isn't the first time either. I've filed, or uh, I've had a couple of claims filed against me. That's how it happens. If you put up YouTube videos, you're going to get claims filed against you. That's, that's how YouTube works now. It doesn't matter what you do. If you do it enough, you're going to get claims filed against you. It's annoying as shit, but it's the reality of the situation. And, uh... So, I filed, you know, three in, like, the past month, I think. Three counterclaims in the past month. All three of them have been responded to within 24 hours with a notification saying that 30 days have lapsed. All three of them. So the content ID system is borked uh, in theory, because how it was designed is completely frailed, and it's borked in... Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't work technolo technologically either. It's broken. So, yeah... YouTube, breaking everything. Of course, we all know this. I mean, YouTube gaming goes live. All the thumbnails on gamers breaks. They did fix that, though. Um, if anybody noticed, that's why episode 3 didn't have a thumbnail for a long time. Because YouTube decided to break. Um... Apparently, Content ID's having its, a field day on the new YouTube Gamer, or YouTube Gaming. That's actually the theory as to why YouTube Gaming now exists. It's not to make, or not to make it easier to find, like, video game content. It's, it's to be easier to file claims against it. Yeah, that's the running theory anyways. It's YouTube is segregating off the gaming section of YouTube because they don't like gamers. That's how it feels anyways. It may not be true, but that is sure as hell how it feels. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. I'm not the one that thought up that idea. Personally, I have no real argument against YouTube um, for what they do. I know that the content ID system is a raging pile of bullshit forced upon them by assholes like Viacom who insist to who insist on abusing the copyright system. And I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, "Oh, well they don't abuse it. I mean, that's they're protecting their own stuff." Uh they're protecting their own stuff while simultaneously ab Using, going above and way above and beyond what they're legally allowed to do. Um, because they file claims on content they don't own. It's all based on keywords. That's how they do it. That's how a lot of companies do it, is it's based on keywords. And uh, if your video has the same keyword as a title of somebody's movie, your video gets a claim against it. I don't have any stone to fix my axe. Crap. And I don't think I have enough axe to finish getting through this door. Um, so, yeah, that's actually a violation of the DC, or the the Copyright Act. That's, that's actually a violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. For some reason, I can't say it's accurate anymore. Yep, there it goes. 
can I possibly finish breaking it with the pickaxe? It looks like I can. Cool. Uh, yeah, so... It's annoying as shit. So, I have no real argument against... I am not even bothering. That's gonna take just too damn long. I'm not gonna bother. So, I have no direct argument against YouTube. I mean, I don't like the content ID system, but YouTube feels that ha they have been shoved into a corner and they're forced to do it. And it's just really annoying. It's a crap situation all around. And it just sucks. So, hmm. But that's the way life is right now. We can fight it. In fact, that's all we can do. We can fight it. We can't... Uh, we have to live with it for now. Uh, we can't... We shouldn't stop fighting it. But as of right now, we have to deal with that as a reality. Ugh. I wish I had an axe. Maybe I should go get a stone and make an axe. Do I hear a wasp? No, I think I just hear the sign. Stone. Do I have grass? I have grass. I have sticks. Axe. So another mildly interesting thing happened. At least mildly interesting to me. Went up to Best Buy today. Thought I saw something else floating. I think it was just uh, screen tearing as I was quickly turning my head. Um, went up to Best Buy today and started looking at headphones. Because I wanted a new set of headphones uh, for the office, specifically. So I can have a good set of over-the-ear headphones for our sound system. And uh, so I was listening to, this is what I was hoping to find. Thank you. Uh... Yeah, so I was listening to the headphone demos they had set up. And, uh, you know, I started with the Sonys. Because, you know, I instantly skipped the Beats audio and, uh, what was the other one? Bose. I instantly skipped Bose and I instantly skipped Beats. Because they they're both known crap. Bose just uses tricks to make it kind of almost maybe sound better, but not really. And uh, Beats Audio is just bass. That's, that's all it is. That's all bass is. So I started with the Sonys because I'm like, well, Sony, Sony has a good reputation for electronics. Pretty good reputation for electronics anyways. Let's see, what can I... Um, yeah, what can I clean up here? Uh, so, yeah, uh, buh, now I've lost my train of thought again. God damn it. Um, yeah, anyways, uh, Sony has a relatively good reputation for electronics, so I figured, oh, let's, let's check out the Sony, see if they're any good. Bass. Nothing but bass. Seriously, like... Headphone shaking levels of bass. Ridiculous, insane levels of bass. It's just stupid, stupid levels of bass. I'm like, oh, well, that needs to stop. And I put the, put the Sony headphones away because they were just ridiculous. All of them, every single last one of them were just bad. I think the glue is needed for a mini bike. So then I went over to the Skull Candy headphones because they were the only other ones that had a setup for demos and don't ever ever buy headphones unless you listen to the headphones first seriously because if you do you'll be absolutely dumbfounded sometimes out of sheer luck of course by figuring out that skull candy actually has really fucking good in here headphones hm. i don't know what to get rid of there we go. That'll clear up some space. Um, anyways, that's a different story. I want that too. Oh, I want so much stuff, but I don't know where to put all of this stuff. I have so much crap. I don't need you. I'm picking and choosing as I go. So, yeah, I started listening to the Skull Candy 
headset. I mean, Skull Candy has a bad reputation. They're kind of like Beats in their reputation, where it's bass. It focuses on bass. Now, I know why they do that, and that's because of things like rap that is basically nothing but bass and uh, dubstep, which is so distorted, you can focus on the bass and, you know, you'll never hear a difference. But uh, I've had a good, I've had good luck with Skull Candy. So I started listening to Skull Candy, and the first one I listened to, oh my god, the bass was... I don't even know how... There are no words to describe how bad the bass was. It was terrible. I later figured out that there's actually a slider on the side of the headphones for bass boost. Um, I already have a set of headphones like that. I don't want another set of headphones like that. I really don't. I want good headphones. You know, headphones that are designed for the entire range of audio. I mean, we can listen to, what, from 20 hertz to, what, 15,000 hertz or 30,000 hertz or something like that. Something absolutely ridiculous like that. Our range is ginormous. And yet, everybody focuses on, like, 200 to 400 hertz. It's annoying as shit. No, I'm pulling numbers out my ass. I don't actually know. But, uh... Anyways, uh, so I'm listening to the Skull Candies, and the, the one Skull Candy headset is terrible. I listen to another one, and I'm like, okay, this isn't bad. Uh, the music, quote unquote, that I was given to to listen for the demo was bass. That's all it was. It was a rap song, and it was a regular singing song in the uh, musical stylings of rap. So the audio... While the singer was actually singing, uh, the audio or the music in the background was the kind of music you hear in the background of rap. So it was mostly bass. So it was really, really hard to tell. Which will come back later in this story. Um, but yeah, the first set of headphones was terrible. The second set of headphones was okay. It wasn't bad, but I didn't like the shape of them. They weren't. They were over-the-ear headphones, but they didn't they weren't wrap around headphones. Like they didn't wrap around your ear. So they were more old-fashioned style. Um So then I picked up the fourth set of headphones. And I'm like, oh, these are still pretty bad bass-wise. No. Third set of headphones. Picked up the third set of headphones, and I'm like, oh, these are still pretty bad bass-wise. Picked up the fourth set of headphones, and I'm like, oh, these are actually pretty good, and they're shaped the way I like. And then I figured out that the fourth set of headphones and the third set of headphones were exactly the same model, just different colors. I'm like, well, it, what, what? Well, it must just be, uh, I don't know, my brain kicking it in? I, I don't really know. I have no idea. Um, so I'm like, okay, so these are tolerable. But they're not necessarily good. The other ones were good, but I didn't want the style. And, uh, you know, the rest were just absolute garbage. Put medicine in there for now. And uh, let's put building supplies in here. So, yeah, I... So I was do or, or, so I looked at the other headphones that were set up. You know what my other options were headphones, you know, headphone wise. The only other ones that were set up were Bose and Beats. And I don't like Beats audio. I have I actually have Beats audio in my laptop. And I I do not like it. It's not good audio. I mean, yes, okay, the laptop speakers are itty-bitty tiny. So I don't expect them to be good. I mean, they were pretty bad even for laptop speakers, but I didn't expect them to be good. However, I expected when I plugged in good headphones, which I have several pair of, I expected to hear good audio. No, not from that laptop. Not at all. Annoyed the hell out of me, actually. So, um, where the hell was I going with this story? So, I ignored Beats. I ignore Bose because they just use 
acoustic trickery to make it kind of sound good. But if you have an ear for it, which I'm developing, which is really shocking to me. I never thought I'd be an audiophile, but I'm developing the ear for it. Um, yeah, if you have an ear for it, you can catch it, and it's not good. So I was looking at the fourth set of Skull Candy heads, headphones. I'm like, these are actually okay. They didn't sound bad. Um, I'm thinking about going with these. So, you know, I'm like, okay, these are wireless Bluetooth. And, I'm, of course, I'm thinking, wireless Bluetooth. I wonder how good that's going to end up. But it also has a wired option, too. I'm like, oh, okay, so I could run these wired, and I could run them wireless. So I can run them wired when I'm normally using them, and then run them wireless off of my phone when I want to, uh, like, uh, vacuum out in the living room or something like that. I don't have to have the wire getting in the way. Okay, this is a good idea. Uh, they're a little expensive. They were $100. But I figured, you know, that's not bad. I mean, my other head set of headphones previously, my previous set of headphones were Skull Candy Skull Crushers. I like them. I like them a lot. Yes, they have that bass boost slider thing, which I don't like, and it doesn't work all that well. But I like the headphones. Uh, if you don't use the bass boost, they sound pretty damn good. Um... So I, so I figured, okay, I've had good luck with Skull Candy, so you know what? I'm going to go with Skull Candy this time around. And uh, I wasn't terribly dis... Or, uh, yeah, I wasn't terribly disappointed with my previous, quite literally three different types of Skull Candy headphones. Um, so I picked up... These are called the... Hesh 2 wireless. So H E S H 2. I am horribly disappointed in these headphones. I am. It's all about the bass. Alright, that's on, that's off. It, it is all about the bass. Even the audio that doesn't have bass in it is all like shifted down in pitch. And it's really, really. Annoying. I hate it. I'm actually debating on returning these headphones. I'm giving it a little time. Ooh, ow. Uh, that's actually probably a reason to return these headphones in and of itself right there, what I just did. Um, but I'm thinking about returning these headphones because the audio quality is just absolutely terrible. But how they sit on my head... Pain. Absolute pain. I'm actually going to have to stop recording after today. Like I said, I usually record in two, two episodes uh, per recording session. I'm going to have to stop recording because the pain in my skull, it hurts. I'm going to have to take off these headphones. I'm going to have to put back on my old ones. Ugh. These are not good headphones. So if you're looking for headphones... Avoid the Skull Candy Hesh 2. The audio is not good. And the uh, the design of them hurts my ears, hurts my skull. Because it's not sitting across my head like the Skull Crushers did. It's sitting right on the point on the top of my head. Very painfully. And the ear pieces, the ear cups, don't bend in so they don't fit my ear so they're shoving down the back of my ear my earlobe itself and not putting like any pressure on the front of my ear yes i know i'm hungry i'm cooking the food downstairs right now after 2200 hours it's probably a bad idea but i need food uh so yeah avoid the hesh set or hesh headphones uh, if you can find the Skull Crushers, buy those. They're actually pretty good. Um, also, their uh, cell phone in-ear headphones. Like, I found a cheap pair. $20 cell phone headphones 
that were absolutely freaking amazing. It's actually they're actually what started me into this audiophile thing. And yeah, so so basically don't buy headphones unless you can actually test them or unless you uh just need a cheap pair of headphones like I did and uh, just go, you know what these will work, they're cheap, they'll work and be pleasantly surprised, honestly. Um yeah, and don't buy the Skull Candy Hesh 2 headset because they'll just they're a pain in the head. So, I will see you guys in the next episode, and as always, keep playing the game, and have fun.